I don't know, Shane, if you got this when you started, but when I started, they were telling me, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. You're, yeah. You're doing too much, and you're doing it too fast. I said, yeah, slow down. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and Terry Funk said, he said to me, God damn it, Mikey, slow down. And if you think you're going too <laughs> goddamn slow, slow down. I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, and, then, and then I'm I'm watching these kids now, 25 years later, and I'm saying to myself, God, they're doing too much. And I'm, I'm t- they're they're doing more moves than I did. And I thought back then I did too much. Right. You know. And I, and I get the business change, and it's going to evolve a bit. I I still think, but there's, there's a there's a lack of, like you said, Shane, being organic. Well, here's kind of here's the difference though. When when Terry Funk came and said that to you, did you listen to it or just ignore him and say, oh, he's just an old guy trying to slow me down because I'm faster than he is and. You know, the business has passed them by. Or did you listen to every syllable he said? Oh, I listened to every syllable. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did, did, I ever, did I ever tell you a story about him sitting next to me at the Holiday Inn in Philadelphia by, by the fireplace? Did I ever tell you the story? No. No. It's, yeah, but <laughs> anything with Funk's a great story, so I'm all ears. He, he gets a six-pack of beer, and he goes, Mikey, what are you doing tonight? I go, oh, nothing, just kind of hanging out. Come down, come sit here with me. I said, okay. So we're sitting by the fireplace, and he goes, and he opens up a beer, and he gives me one. And he goes, you know, when I broke in in Texas with my dad, and and then we did that there, and then I came with Dory Jr., and then we started to go to NWA. We worked with Holly Race, and and then we went down to Florida with Dr. Jerry Graham, who's going to do a ham ham this went on for the whole six pack from I'm saying a yep. good hour, hour and a half. Right. <laughs> and I, I just, I'm sitting there going, this guy's fucked up. Like this guy's seriously <laughs> like, right. So he goes, well, are you on the show tomorrow? I said, I said, yeah. Cause this, we did, we did the arena show on the Friday night and then we did TV on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Right. So, so he, he goes up to his room and I'm thinking to myself, that was the most, Coolest, most whacked out, insane thing I've ever been a part of. So I get up to my room, and Paulie calls me, and he goes, he goes, hey, you know, come up here. So I go up to his room, and he goes, Terry Funk fucking loves you. And I go, why? He goes, he just fucked with you for an hour and a half, and you didn't say a word. And when, when, I, when, I was tra- when I was training guys, I said to them, I said, that is a highly exaggerated example of coming in and keeping your mouth shut. I said, yeah. because, because now in my head, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but this is really, and in, in between the hammer, 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 I kind of got the story <laughs> where he was going, you know? Yeah. But, but I said to the guys, I said, this is an example of someone who had an ungodly amount of experience, who was a legend in the business, who at almost 50 yeah. years old at that point was still on top. I said, he mm-hmm. took the time to sit down and talk to me. And yeah, he played the old timer thing and he kind of messed with me a little bit, ribbed me. I said, but I sat there and I took it. So from that day on though, every time I saw Terry, he got a big smile on his face, said, hello, always watch my matches. He would give me advice. If I asked him for something, yeah. he'd give me advice. And just because I sat, listened to him and I, I passed his quote unquote test. Well, and that's Which what it was. was he, he wanted to see if you were going to sit and listen or if you just, like, sit there and, like, excuse yourself or whatever. And right. it, it was a test. That's exactly what it was, but very similar to that, but, like, on an alternate vein. Uh, you know, remember how high strung I used to be? <laughs> uh, and <laughs> I, I called Terry one day, uh, you know, ready to strangle somebody. I said, how the fuck after all these years how the fuck have you put up with this bullshit and I'm, I'm cutting a promo for 20 minutes and at the end he goes well Santa I'll tell you and he's going on you know in the, in the same spiel and he goes I'll tell you and he kept asking me in the middle of it as he's going through that spiel you know Santa you know, hey listen to me Santa yeah I'm listening to you, Terry well you know Santa you gotta <laughs> man, I'll tell you Santa, you, Shana, you listen to me uh, and he's going same exact thing just drawing this whole thing out for 20 minutes what he could have said in three seconds and after 20 minutes, you want to say that I can tell you there's only one way, God damn it. Shana, you listen to me. Ha, ha, ha. There's only one way, Shana. There's only one way you can do it. Shana, you listen to me. I said, yeah, Terry, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you, Terry. 
Because they'll say, there's only one way, God damn, you can put up with this business. Ha, <laughs> Shane, are you listening to me, Shane? There's only one way you can put up with this business. Shane, you're going to be crazy like a fox. Ha, <laughs> ha, Shane, you're going to be crazy like a fox. And then he went right back <laughs> into the character. And it was the first time in all the years I'd known Terry that he had dropped that front. I'd always thought right. Terry was Terry. That was Terry, the, the crazy yep. funk. And it, it, like the light bulb went on. Like, holy shit, it's all a work. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, you know, I, at that point, I was 15 years in the business and was still learning. Uh, <laughs> every night working with Terry. He was incredible. He is incredible. Yeah. 